our nervous system is just like a tube and with a tube with a disproportionate length maybe tapering at one end so our brain and our spinal cord is just a tube of varying diameter but think in terms of development then when our body starts from a cell the zygote and the zygote divides into several cells and these cells eventually form the blastocyst now the blastocyst has a chunk of cells now these chunk of cells need to be flattened in form of a sheet and then it need to form the whole tube so how this geometrical problem is solved is an interesting question and intrigued the scientists for over decades so in this video we'll be talking about how the neural tube forms so after gastrulation in the gastrula where you have all the three layers and if you cut that gastrula you would have a view like this if you cut the gastrula in a medial section mid-level section you would have a view like this in here in blue you can see the ectoderm in yellow you can see the mesoderm and in brown you can see the endoderm at least three germ layers are formed right now now in this situation you have uh, the notochord which is derived from the mesoderm and notochord plays a central role in terms of uh, development of the neural tube and specification of the nervous system so notochord is itself generated by an indentation called a primitive pit which is actually elongated in a rostrocordal axis to form a primitive streak now notochord defines the midline of the embryo now the epithelia which is just above the notochord the part of ectoderm is known as neuroectoderm and why this part of epithelia is different from its adjacent neighbors we would talk about it later so definitely they are different in terms of cellular properties however this neuroectoderm eventually the neuroectoderm which is above the uh, notochord folds and this folding is known as neural fold and due to this folding a groove or a pit is formed which is called as neural groove now the edges of the neural fold kind of invaginates inside and you can imagine when it invaginates it almost form a tube like structure and eventually the tube closes now the neural tube closure is complete now when the neural tube closure is complete there are some cells which are detached from the neuroectoderm known as the neural crest cells and there are several spaces inside the uh, neural tube which are specifically defined as a morphogen gradient source such as the region just above the notochord which is known as the floor plate and the region which is above in the uh, roof side of that it's called the roof plate so these roof plate and floor plate are source of morphogen which is so important for neuronal development and development of the nervous system indeed now you can understand that the floor plate is actually the uh, the, the notochord and the floor plate is actually the rich source for ssh whereas the roof plate is a source for wind and bmps so there is an opposing gradient of wind and ssh in the dorsoventral axis so in the dorsoventral axis this differential gradient determines how the tissue is experiencing the wind and bmp and ssh signal and depending upon the degree of its experiencing about these morphogen they form different structure now at day 25 almost the neural tube folding is complete neural tube folding starts from the middle part and spreads in rostral and caudal direction it's almost complete so the tube is now well defined and alongside of the tube the mesodermal tissue forms the somites and you can see the neural crest cells form a several population now you would be amused to know that the neural tube give rise to the central nervous system that means your brain and spinal cord 
whereas the neural crest cells give rise to the components of your peripheral nervous system. Now we would look at how the adherence properties of several cell layers in the neural tube is so important in terms of the folding. So initially everything, every part of the ectoderm contains epithelial cadherin because it is part of epithelia. But due to the influence of notochord, a portion starts express e cadherin, n cadherin, and stop express e cadherin. That becomes the neuroectoderm. So the n cadherin expression domain becomes the neuroectoderm, and the nearby domains still express e cadherin. Now, one, once the folding starts, eventually there are other structures emerging, like the neural crest cells, or even in the folded neural tube there are floor plate and roof plate. Now it turns out that the floor plate, uh, the cells in the floor plate, they express cadherin 6b and the neural crest cells express cadherin 7. So due to this difference in the adhesion properties, the neural crest cell can detach from their origin and they can migrate away. So this is so important because cell adhesion properties determine that how the tube folding happens and how sorting of these cells happen. So this is super important in terms of neuronal development itself. Now after the neuronal tube has been closed, the nervous system would balloon up and form a tube which is kind of getting elongated in one side and getting more spherical in other side. So there are primitive brain regions which would be formed at the end of three weeks and the regions would be forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Now this embryo would eventually at 11 week have a complete development, de developmental architecture of an adult brain but still a lot of rewiring and neuronal uh, migration and many other things is happening even at embryonic day 11 at uh, embryonic day 11 weeks so by that time the nervous system has start already developed now i hope you enjoyed this video in other videos we would be talking about defects in neural tube folding and many other things so for that if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you